Hi, Year 11. This is the um, lesson for Monday the 20th about ions and ionic bonding. So I'll just go over uh, this. This is basically the whole bit of new material, plus a little bit of revision. So ions and ionic bonding, okay? So what is all the ions business about? It's about how atoms bond or join together. Ionic bonding is how metal atoms join on to non-metal atoms. For example, table salt, which I've spelled wrong here. Table salt. This is also chemically called sodium chloride. is made up from you, you start with a metal called sodium, which is a reactive nasty metal dissolved through your skin and your hands, reacts with water and catches a light. Uh, and chlorine, which is a green poisonous gas, you can smell it down at the swimming pool because it's used to kill the germs. Very, very poisonous. It's used to kill people in one of the wars. Okay. And then when you join them together, uh, the metal, the, the atoms change to ions. You get the sodium atoms and the chlorine atoms change to ions. Sodium turns into a positive ion. It has a positive electrical charge of plus one, and the chlorine has a negative charge of negative one. And this is what the structure of table salt looks like here. It's just now that the uh, atoms have changed to ions, they have this electrical charge. The positive and negative charges attract each other, and they end up sitting like that. Chlorine iron is much larger than the sodium iron, and it settles down. And that's your piece of table salt, which you can't survive without salt. It's necessary for life. So over here, we have the meaning or definition of an ionic bond. An ionic bond is the attraction between positive and negative ions. That's what holds them together to make new chemicals. Now, I know from experience that a lot of you will have read over that. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I understand that. That's all good, etc. You need to go back two or three times and read that to get it into your brain to fully understand it, okay, before you go on to the next section, which is over here. Okay, so you should click back to the start of this video and just very carefully ensure you understand every word of that. Okay? Over here is the main bit of today's lesson. It is all about how and why the ions form. In the last lesson we said that ions form and they give an atom a full outer shell because it's full and stable. Having a full outer or valence shell means that the particle is stable and in nature, getting stable or losing energy is a big driving force. Okay, over here I'm going to have a look at how an ionic bond performs between a metal and a non-metal. And the metal that I've chosen is magnesium, Mg, and the non-metal that I've chosen is fluorine, so magnesium and fluorine. So before the reaction, we have a magnesium atom. It's got the configuration 2.8. Two. Okay. For it to get a full shell, it's easiest to have this second shell here is nice and full, and there's only a couple of loose electrons here. It's easiest for magnesium to lose two electrons to turn into its iron. So here in the atom, we have 12 positive protons in the nucleus and 12 negative electrons over here. So we've got 12 positives protons. 12 negative electrons. Overall, the electrical charge on an atom is zero, not positive nor negative overall. And after the reaction, the magnesium is totally lost. That outer shell, those two valence electrons have been gone. They've been lost to um, the fluorine atoms. Okay. And what is left is this lovely, hard, full outer, stable outer shell here. The electron configuration here is 2.8, okay? And in that ion, we have 12 positive protons in the nucleus still, but we only have two negative electrons, 10 negative electrons here. So overall, it has a two plus charge, two extra positives, or if you like, two missing negatives. 
the fluorine atom before the reaction is like this, the 2.7. And as it says up here, non-metals are electron grabbers and form negative ions. So this electron is grabbed by the fluorine and it gets a full outer shell because it's got 7, 2.7, and it just needs to grab one to end up the full stable shell, which we see over here. We have full shell. I've even colored the magnesium electron in as red, not that electrons have colors, but now it's got 2.8 and it's got a nice full stable shell. If this was chlorine, the next one in the family, it would actually have 2.8.8, but it would actually have a full outer shell and it would also be a minus one ion. Now, the magnesium loses two electrons, but fluorine only takes one. So in nature, when you burn magnesium and fluorine gas, what happens is that um, two fluorine atoms will um, grab an electron each. So we end up with two fluoride is the name, fluoride ions, and the substance we form is magnesium fluoride. And later on in our next lesson, we'll probably get started on ionic formulas. But the formula, when you have a jar full of magnesium fluoride, you have uh, twice as many fluorine atoms as you do of magnesium. And that is the formula of magnesium fluoride. It's just a yet another white powder like most of these ionic things, okay? So it goes from being a nice shiny silver piece of magnesium and a yellow poisonous explosive gas uh, for the, sorry, uh, gas for the fluorine uh, gas into a plain old white solid powder made of little grains, which is magnesium fluoride. And in fact, as in some medicines, you use magnesium fluoride. So it's quite harmless compared to the fluorine. Okay. So again, with all that new material, probably certainly if you're not sure about it, run through this picture at least twice a year. Be very careful of this one reading each of them because I don't want you to fully understand. You could even jot down some notes on this book when you're really, really, really confused or blind. Okay.